Hey everybody, welcome to the MA Heat Podcast. I'm Karen Bryant and he is... I'm Pete Cumming. So we're going back to our rounds today. We got a little two-minute intro. Pete is still on vacation, living the dream. So so where are you now? I'm in uh, Maine now. Nice. Maine, the second whitest place I've been <laughs> nice. in the last couple of weeks. And before anybody gets upset, you know, I am from New England. I I, uh, I just love to joke about the vineyard in Maine and all that, but they really are beautiful places. I'm sure you're having a great time. Oh, it's great. We went out in a speedboat today. It was awesome. Nice. Was nice. Well, I'm still in L.A. Uh, it's very hot and humid here, um, but it's okay. It's a good primer. I'm going to be going to Chicago later this week for the big UFC on Fox show with Hennon uh, trying to get his title back from T.J. Dillashaw. So, that's coming up for me this week. I want to let people know on the show today, we're going to spend two rounds talking about UFC Glasgow, um, and then we'll spend two rounds talking about UFC San Diego. And then in round five, we're probably going to, we might do some summer movie talk. Pete, Pete found some, you've got some new discoveries you made on vacation, sort of big world really ideas. interesting thing. Apparently the car I rented, uh, apparently I rented the wrong car. We'll talk about so that. So we'll get into uh, that as well. Um, so, so, uh, oh, just so people know, coming up for UFC, I mean, uh, for, for MMA Heat on Friday, we went down to King's MMA uh, and shot a bunch of interviews. There's one with Chris Cyborg that's up, and she answers uh, Ronda. Ronda was saying she wanted to fight Chris for her very last fight ever, and then just, like, get the belt on one last time and then give it back to Dana and be like, I'm out. So that was Ronda. We have a whole thing with Ronda. Uh, she did a media day on Thursday, so we have a ton of stuff with Ronda on our YouTube channel. Then we also got Chris's response. But down at King's, uh, shot with Shogun, who's fighting on the same card as Ronda. He looks great, so we saw him training, did an interview. Uh, and we also got Rafael Cordero, Benil Dariush, uh, also the wrestling coach, Jacob Harmon. So that's all being uh, edited together. So we have lots of good stuff for you on the way. So is Rhonda already talking about her retirement? Kind of, sort of. Uh, we can get into that a little bit later. She's oh, already fine. pictured the end of the, the beginning of the, anyway. Gotcha. Round one, uh, let's talk about um, Michael Bisman, UFC Glasgow. Pete, uh, what was your first impression of that fight? That was a tough fight to score. Um, I thought Bisman clearly won the fifth round. Mm -hmm and clearly lost round three. Mm -hmm. And I think rounds one, two, and four, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's how you score them. Um, I have a man crush on Bisping, so I gave him two of those three rounds. So he pulled out the win in my book. But, uh, you know, if not for my unusual attraction to the man, uh, um, he might not have done it. Uh, listen, he's in phenomenal shape. Yeah. He just doesn't stop. Stop. Mm -hmm. um, and I think he really pulled it out in that fifth yeah. round. So, yeah. you know, I yeah. think he deserved the victory. Oh, I, I think he deserved it too. But, you know, it was, it's tricky when you watch your friends fight. Uh, obviously, you know, I work with Michael a lot at Fox, and he, I, I really love the guy, you know. Um, and then some people are like, oh, well, how can you be a journalist when you call these people your friends? Well, I work with him now. Like, he, he's a friend right. of mine. You know what I mean? He's, I'm sorry, but it happens. Um, and he fought really hard, you know. He did, I agree with you, look like he was in better shape than ever. And, you know, sometimes when guys take a quick fight, it, you know, it, it doesn't bode well for them. And he last fought in April. But I thought he looked really good. You know, it was very difficult to score. And and maybe it's funny, I actually saw Talis Lachey's doing a lot of good things. Like, I feel like when I watched it, I saw what Talis landed. And I was like, oh, no, like that looks... You know, he's doing really well. And he was really putting the pressure on Michael at some of those points. And he, he definitely had Michael hurt. And I... I think in my desire to be objective, I actually saw Talis doing more mm. than I saw Michael. Do you know what I mean? But if I sat there with a punch counter, I would have realized, yeah, Michael's, you know, scoring all these points, which obviously I know. But I did see it like, oh, my God, I think it's two to two going in. Right, I don't know. Right. Like some of these judges might see Leitch's winning right now. I don't know what's going on. Right. So, of course, we know what happens at the end. One of the judges gave it uh, gave one, two, four and five to Michael. One judge gave one, two, and four to Michael, and one judge gave one and four to Michael. Wait, one judge gave one, two, and four to Michael? Yeah. But not round five. Yeah, so that's why, you know, because we had a split decision. So, yeah, one guy gave him one, two, four, and five. One guy gave him one, two, and four, and one guy gave him one and four. Interesting. Yeah, so it, it's tricky, but... Uh, I'm really um, glad for him. You know, I know that was a, a tough fight. And uh, afterwards, Talis was saying that, you know, he knows he made some mistakes. And he says, yeah, you know, I haven't, that's a long time to fight. Five, five-minute rounds. And, you know, there were some things that I did wrong. And I'll, I'll learn from this experience. And, and like you said, Michael just doesn't, he's relentless, you know. 
He doesn't stop. Um, so good and, for him. Good for him. And listen, in such a close fight, mm -hmm. it's the relentless fighter. I mean, because you have nothing else. You know, like, for the person watching at home, determining what's a significant strike and what's a non-significant is really tough to tell. And mm -hmm. even if, you know, and even if a guy does a high leg kick and the other guy blocks it, right. you still hear that pound. And, you know, the judge is a human. Like, right. that action in a close fight, that action is going to tilt it. And the thing about the judging is sometimes you have a great view of what's happening, the way they're positioned around right. the octagon. Right. Sometimes they have a terrible view. You know what I mean? And they don't know. But uh, Michael did set a record now. He has now surpassed George St. Pierre for the all-time significant strikes record in the history of the UFC. Uh, wow. He was, he was, you know, going into it, he only needed to land 80 strikes or something. So he's now number one. Uh, GSP is behind him, Frankie Edgar, Sam Stout, and, uh, and John Jones. So great accomplishment for him there. Um, you know, afterwards, he's... He, you know, he's been talking about making a title run. He's a little older. I don't know uh, if that's going to happen. We have about 45 seconds. Um, I would like to see him get revenge against, not revenge necessarily, but avenge the loss to Vitor, like get another fight, sh shot there. Yeah. Uh, he mentioned that, and he mentioned uh, Dan Henderson. Because, you know, these guys were on TRT and different things, and they fought Michael, and now he wants it to be a, a level playing field. I also think uh, Leona Machida could be a good fight for him. Does he believe that he has a he uh, he has a le legitimate chance? He d he does. I mean, Michael will never back down from that. You know, he right. he's been a top ten fighter for ten years, um, and he thinks he's got another run. You know, I mean, the thing about it is, Luke beat him. Luke's got Weidman next. Yoel right. Romero and Jacare should fight each other. They were scheduled to. They may do it. Um, but then you know, Gegard's got a fight. He's number seven. He's got a fight in a month. Or well, a month and a half or so in September. There's nobody easy, and around one. There's nobody easy there, is the thing. It's it's hard to picture him breaking into the top five. It's tough. When you have Yoel Romero, Jacare, you know, right. Weidman, um, you know, who, it is tough. Uh, it is tough. But the fact that he believes it, yeah. and I think he's so mentally tough. Yeah. I'm going to enjoy watching him try. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, so good for him, and, you know, I was joking. Maybe we'll have another cake. The last time, I don't know when he's coming in to work with us again, though. We got him a nice cake after he beat C.B. Dalloway. Nice. Uh, it's nice. But I tell you, it really is difficult watching your friends and your coworkers fight. It's, it's you know, my yeah. heart, like, kind of freaks out. Uh, and like I said, I really think I saw some of the things Michael was doing wrong or, like, when Michael got hurt. And I, I felt like I was more sensitive to that. Uh, had about to head into round two there. But, but, but congrats to him. Uh, it was a really good fight for him. So as we head into round two, uh, let's talk about some of the other things on the card. Uh, First of all, what could we be more low rent right now? <laughs> hey, listen, we're making it happen. Just you're, you're vacationing Next in Maine. Uh, there's nothing low rent about that. You're Mr. High End right now. Um, curious what you thought about the co-main event between Ross Pearson and Evan Dunham. Uh, going into this one, I, you know, I'm an admitted uh, fan of Ross Pearson's fighting style. Um, and it didn't go his way. Did you enjoy that fight, or did that fight bother you? What did you think? I think Ross Pearson is part squid. I don't know how the heck he got out of that oh, arm bar. God. What was that? I'm like, and then, so then I'm expecting when he stands up that that arm's going to be hanging loosely. By. I'm like, like, I'm thinking he's torn all right. types of ligaments. Mm -hmm. I... I'm still like, like a few days later, like how the hell did he like right. I, you know, I went back and watched it again, and it got twisted in yeah. so many different directions. I mean, every doctor who specialized in Tommy John's surgery yeah. was like, "Oh, ready, got your client." <laughs> yeah, Tell me. I thought for sure. I thought if anything, it would end up being a verbal submission because sometimes you have the ref hears you cry out in pain or whatever, right. they'll just right. they'll just stop it. Um, he was frustrated with that fight, you know, afterwards he said that he, you know, he really came, to, you, know, you know, guys say this a lot when they get kind of commanded um, with wrestling or would you just, oh, I came here to fight and that's not the fight, you know, he just kind of wanted to lay on me and hold me down. It's like, well, that's his strategy and the guy knows that you're a good boxer, so uh, you can't really take it away, it, you know, it's not really Evan's fault for fighting his fight. Uh, I, I did kind of expect more from that. Um, Jojo Calderwood had everybody nervous <laughs> for a minute, the hometown girl. Uh, you know, she had a really fast loss in her last fight um, against Myrna Moroz, uh, uh, and 
you know, this time coming out, this girl who came in on short notice filling in for Beck Rollins, Courtney Casey comes in and just starts blasting her uh, on the feet. Then they go to the ground. Courtney's beating her on the ground, too. And I'm thinking, oh, JoJo, you know, you're supposed to be this prospect. And uh, it's not going so well. But then she turned it up, uh, turned it around. But I, I, she can't start slow like that. She's going to get some. Well, you can't do that. Also, I mean. If this is one fight where the fighter won, like the fighter lost, but they still won, yeah. I mean, Courtney Casey Big time. Uh, made a name for it. I mean, yeah. she fights on 10 days' notice, flies from Hawaii to Scotland, yeah. which is, I believe, like a seven and a half day flight right. anyway. Yeah, and, right. then, you know, and then is like fighting in hostile territory. Yeah. And listen, with a full training camp, because she was clearly gassed in that yeah. third. Yeah. Uh, with a full training camp, yeah, that's uh, that fight goes a different way, I think. It, it, yeah, it could, and you know, she. I, I, I'm, I'm excited to see her in there. Um, I was talking to Dominic um, about Beck Rollins' injury. Said it's a hip injury. You know, cause she does train down at uh, Alliance with um, Angela Magana. St- they've been down at the gym. So he said, no, she's got a pretty bad hip injury. So I don't know when we're going to see Beck Rollins back necessarily. But I agree with you, Courtney Casey, something special. And, you know, it's, it's, some people were talking about Joanne, like, oh, you know, she's such a prospect in the division and <clears throat> could fight for the title soon. No, no. Joanna Champion would wreck her yeah, at this point. Yeah. So I, I, she needs to – again, JoJo also said she had some personal issues. You know, she, she used to be, like, I guess her coach – as a training partner and fiance, and they broke up, and blah 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 blah. blah. Well, her post-fight interview was very emotional, yeah. and she talked about wanting to quit at one point, right. and how she was fighting against her demons. Right, right. And so it it was nice to. <laughs> you're like, yes, I can do. That no, no, no. Again, I'm just letting you know. Unless, unless you're going anywhere I'm with this. I'm just letting you know. It was courtesy, <laughs> and now. Well. It was nice because you actually did get the feeling that this was a girl who had so much pent up emotion right. and maybe there was just a lot of pressure on her sure. and to see her smile in the ring. Maybe we'll see a different Joanne Cal- 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 Calderwood next time. Maybe we'll see yeah, a little bit. I hope bit so. Better. She's so likable. Um, yeah. I liked her on the show, you know, and I, she's, she's very, very likable. And I agree with you. I, I hope that she gets that stuff straight and is able to, uh, to get a proper camp, you know, with the, with the proper headspace as well. Uh, somebody, uh, somebody else in there. Did you, um, did you, uh, uh, um, what's his face? Irish Joe Duffy. That's right. I was just going to say Irish Joe Duffy. It's all about he, I am a fan of right? Irish Joe Duffy. I mean, one, you know, a, he boxed for three years professionally. Yeah. So his striking's great. Yeah. And then he, and then he defeats a Brazilian on the ground. Right. Uh, he's got swagger. I like him. You know, obviously people, it's hard to talk about him without the whole Connor thing. But, you know, that was such a long time ago that he beat, beat Connor uh, and Aroudou. Such a long time ago that he beat him. It's nice to see him starting to build his name on other, you know, commanding victories that where he gets to look sharp and show off his skills. And, yeah, he's got swagger. He's got, you know, he's got body shots. He's got, yeah, I like him. He's a, he's yeah, a no, I mean, he moves like a complete athlete. Yeah. Just when you watch him move. Right, right, uh, um, right. And, listen, he... What was that? A triangle yeah, that he got yeah. him in, and, and you know, and his striking was great. I mean, he's. I mean, I'm excited to see him. He's, yeah, me too. Me too. I mean, you know, one thing I want to talk about in the quick thirty seconds before round three. The thing about the the, the with JoJo and the coach, you'll never see that reversed. No, you'll never see that reversed. You'll never see a male fighter complaining because his trainer slash wife, <laughs> you know what I mean, was giving him a hard time. I have to say that is one little thing that just kind of bothers me. How many times um, a woman fighter's coach is also her boyfriend. Do you know what I mean? It happens a lot. I, that, that kind of bothers me because we don't really well, see the reverse of it. I, I think that's because you have more men in coaching positions. For sure. In MMA. I don't know if it's necessarily... But you, I guess you don't need to hook up with... I guess what my point is, can we just go train with the dude and not make him our boyfriend? I would bet in most situations they, uh, they became boyfriend, girlfriend, and then trainer, trainee, rather than trainer trainee and then they hooked up i disagree you 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 think they were like come on hit the pads yeah i think they started training together and then (laughs) and then they uh maybe i'll do a survey but i think they started training together (laughs) on a side note apparently this weekend misha uh misha and brian are both on the same card brian is uh fighting on the under uh, he's you know fights earlier than she does misha is the co-main event so i guess she's going to corner brian uh, for his fight, and then he'll come out and corner her for her fight later on. That's so, so romantic. I remember the Isn't first it? 
Tell my wife, let's 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 go and try to kick the shit out of right. people together. <laughs> right. Well, now we've moved on to UFC San Diego, uh, the Frank Mir fight against uh, uh, Todd Duffy. So this was bananas. Uh, I was jumping around. I did the weigh-in show, but I but I wasn't working uh, on fight night, so I'm home watching. And you know, they just came out blasting, and I'm sitting, I'm jumping up and down because I can't I can't even like handle uh the the that fight like pace of that fight and you know they're going back and forth and duffy's landing and you see frank's head kind of one one thousand two you know what i mean you feel like there was a both of these guys and i literally i jumped up i was like oh my god i think frank's going da- what and then like <laughs> right right when i can't even get the sentence out duffy just go bam that was insane dude that was like a tree falling when that, that was just like timber yeah. boom yeah first of all too it's like i'm I'm looking at this going, there is 500 pounds yes. fighting in that ring right yes. now. I mean, and, um, and they just look like two drunks in a bar who stepped outside. And I'll tell you, it's like, so I didn't watch the UFC when Frank Mir was Jam. Frank Mir. Oh, right, okay. um, so I've right. just seen him on his comeback. Mm-hmm. And one, it's been impressive comeback. I mean, one thing I was really impressed with is he, he he's learning. Yeah. He's, He's learning. I mean, he said, you know, his post-fight interview said, you know, usually I'm a lot more technical. Yeah. I get a rap for starting slow, but mm-hmm. I just beat a young bull at his game. Yeah. And it's like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for Frank Mir. I mean, I, I, I mean, are you know, are you going to go against him? I mean, you know, not until he, you know, fights a top five opponent, right. but he's just. Yeah, he no, I'm, he, we saw him in Vegas, and we talked to him about that. Yeah, his his willingness to kind of step back and still be a student of the game, which is uh, which is important. Some people kind of lose that as they go on in their career. He did too say that he fought with some emotion, which he usually doesn't do. But he said, "Yeah, I went in there a little bit angry because Duffy had talked some smack." At one point, they had trained together, um, but Duffy had talked some smack, and so Frank said, "Yeah, he went in there a little angry, and they just threw heavy leather, and maybe it wasn't necessarily the smartest thing to do." And Duffy admits he's like, "Ah, maybe it wasn't the smartest thing to do." It's like, well, yeah, you know. But that's what Duffy's known for. I mean, like he he's won most of, all of his fights by knockout, and very many of them with in a minute so i expected him to do that i didn't expect frank to match him uh punch for punch you know what i mean i expected him to be a little more strategic and that punch that frank landed that was just like a picture perfect like i just yeah. want to land that punch on one person one day, right. in my life right. you know it'll probably have to be like my father when he's hooked up to machines <laughs> and he can barely breathe you know you know, and I'll be like, how did right. Frank do that? Hold on, hold And on. you got the DNR ah. signed, and now you're like, ready to go, Dad. Uh. I don't know. What, what a, like, I mean, wow. No, I know. Well, he got he got Bigfoot Silva with that. He's had the left jab and then the left hook and stuff, and so that's that's some power. You know, there's talk that Fedor might come back uh, to fighting and that the UFC might sign him. So some people are saying, like, oh, my God, get like Frank Muir and Fedor, which would be uh, – Kind of insane. You know, the thing about the heavyweight division is there are definitely fights for him. And uh, it, it, it's more open. You know, there's 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 movement there. And, there, you know, there's opponents he may have faced before that, uh, you know, he could look to do again. But it, I, it's kind of fun to have him there um, doing well. And obviously for Duffy, it's no big deal to lose to him in terms of career setback. Obviously, the guy's still an up-and-comer. And I think he'll still be all right. So Well, look at the guys who are sort of making their comebacks. I mean... Okay. Well, Arlosky, Frank Yes, Mir, well, that's the whole thing. Like, Arlosky looked great. Um, I'm trying to remember if Krokop won his last one. I think he did uh, when they brought him back. Um, yeah, you know, that's the thing is you you just, I guess, have to be able to uh, humble yourself. And, and actually, Talos Lechis, you know, granted he lost to Michael, but he was on a, an eight-fight winning streak, uh, end of round two, five of which, you know, he had gone away from the UFC for a while and was able to get some wins together, then got re-signed to the UFC, and yeah, won five in a row since he got signed so we were actually talking about that uh in the studio that going away from the ufc can sometimes help you because maybe you'll learn a new skill set or improve on something because you have competition that's not quite 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 as killer and you know what i mean you can try some new things without the devastating consequences of a, of a ufc loss so um it actually can be really helpful for some people to go away uh and come back so um but good for frank um it, i didn't expect that <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I expected them to like be smart and then maybe get him down and get a submission or something. I didn't think he was going to go in there and trade leather with that kid. Yikes! I mean, it's great. I mean, he's known as a s- submission yeah. artist, and he yeah. and as he said, he just knocked out a young bull at his game. You know, and I, I 
I just love, I love the balls of yeah. that. Like, yeah. It's cool. It's cool. By the way, he's got a in... totally hot wife, if I can say that with Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Words. No, you're allowed to say Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're in round four, and I want to talk about some of the other fights in there. So, El Kukui, Tony Ferguson, and Josh Thompson, that was such a great scrap, and I knew it would be going into that. You know, Josh Thompson is one of those guys who, same type of thing, has been a very high-level fighter for uh, 10 years or so, and granted, if you look at his record, you'll see some losses, but the, some of them are very, very close, split decision losses are just very, very tightly contested fights. Um, you know, Benson Henderson and uh, Bobby Green. So, you know, Josh coming in, he's taking some time off, and he's been doing some acting, but he's a scrappy, scrappy fighter. If you saw the fight he had with Nate Diaz, like, the guy's really good. But Tony is just this dude right now, just climbing, 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 climbing. Uh, we've seen Tony train um, with uh, Eddie Bravo downtown, and Tony's got a great work ethic, and he's he, to me, when I look at him, he's a kid that's real teachable. Uh, you know, he, he listens well, and he and he's good at sharing what he knows with, with other guys. Um, just a really athletic guy. I, it's funny because people were asking me in that fight, I said, well, it's kind of a pick em, but if I have to lean toward somebody, uh, I, le I, I tweeted out, yeah, that I was leaning toward Kukui. I thought he looked awesome. Well, I, I mean, I became fans of both these guys for yeah. different reasons. I mean, Tony's got these front kicks that remind me of Rory McDonald. Yeah, yeah. And I just thought he looked great. And I don't know how Josh survived that second round. And not only did he survive it, but I'm like, well, you know, the third round's just gonna be, he's just gonna be trying to beat out the clock. And it's like, no, 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 he was, he was going for the win that third round. Yeah. And uh, and so both these guys just earned huge, huge, you know, huge respect. One judge said the second round was a 10-8 round. Yeah. And it's like, I want to see more 10-8 rounds. Like that yeah. was the right score for that second round. Yeah. If you don't give that second round a 10-8 round. You don't give any round. Nobody gets it. Yeah, that was a beat uh -huh. down. Well, the thing is, too, you know, I've known Josh a long time. So I've known how good he's been for a long time. So I was excited to see him still fighting at such a high level. And like you said, that third round, he even said after the fight that that's when he, you know, he did still turn it up and he still was coming. Uh, it was just a little, you know, a little too late uh, at that point. Another um, exciting fight on that card, um, Alan Joban. You know, he was supposed to fight on the New Orleans card earlier this year and he couldn't do it. He had hurt his, uh, I believe it was his elbow. So he got to be on this card. And... That fight was interesting because, you know, he lost a point um, at, in the first round, and he also got dropped in the first round. So I thought, okay, that means he's – and once you get dropped, it's usually you get nine points and the other guy gets ten. And so then he lost a point, so I was like, oh, maybe he only has eight points in that first round. But when you look at the scorecard, everybody still gave him nine points. They still said that Joe Van won round one, and so then the first round was a 9-9. Nine -nine. Uh, I just, I loved that fight. I, I thought it was really fun, really exciting. Um, you know, Joe Ben is a guy that uh, goes in there to put on a show. I know a lot of guys say that, but I think he really does believe it. Uh, a Look, lot of he people, did a cartwheel kick. Totally, totally. And people ended the like, round in a cartwheel kick. I mean, I was like, oh, bravo, bravo. I mean, yeah, he no, wants to put on a show. You know? Yeah, you don't train a black house and not learn how to be a tough guy. You know, people comment on him being a pretty boy, but I'm like, no, he, he dude wants to fight. Yeah, listen, you can be good looking yeah. and be for his. I mean, in the I'm in the second round, he had such a vicious body kick yeah. that like, and he was like using the body kicks to free up the head and yeah. it, like you know, and the level changes with his yeah. kicks and that cartwheel yeah. kick. It, it was, it was. It was exciting. Yeah. It was exciting. I'm trying to look here on some of my other ones. Well, I'm happy uh, Manny Gamborian, you know, he and, and Scott Jorgensen went at it, uh, you know, full fight, three rounds. Those guys are both veterans, and I love that they're still doing well. And Manny said, you know, that he had a real bad hip injury and almost pulled out. He had to pull out of a, a, an earlier fight, so he, you know, sucked it up and wanted to go through it. Uh, we have one minute left. Um, so good for him in that one. Also, um, uh, what was I going to say on that other card? There was other – oh, what did you think of um, – wasn't Holly of Holly Holm. Did you like her fight? Listen, people have to stop thinking that she's ready to fight Ronda. Right. Holly Holmes is at least three fights away yeah. from being ready to fight Ronda. I said, okay, I will yeah, I will give you this. Her striking's good, but she comes straight forward mm -hmm. and moves straight back. And yeah. she goes and she starts with the punches and then goes, you know, with the kicks. Right. She, she fights one person who can t t turn on her and take her back, and um, you know, and she's and she's going to be, you know, in you know, in a lot of trouble. Um, I said I think she's good, but these people who are like, you know, you know, she's ready to challenge, you know, run around. No, she's not. She's not even close yet. She's not. I mean, the thing know, is, is 
yeah, a few seconds left. Nobody is, is the problem. So everybody's like, somebody's got to be next to Ronda. You know, I thought she's supposed um, to fight Misha. She's well, not. She's not. You know. I thought I thought Holly. She she is good, and I I like when people put a kick on the end of their combination to finish it up. I think that's always smart. Um, something you know what it is. There's something about her like. I feel like, yeah, somebody who's faster is going to see all that stuff coming. Like, I don't see a sense of, like, urgency with her sometimes. I feel like, yeah, she's very technically proficient at certain things. But I would like to see her just turn it up a little bit more. Like, every, amp it up a little higher. Every time she did it, she started off throwing the punches yeah. and just came forward. Anyone who can do a level change and, yeah. can, um, and can do a takedown yeah. or... It, 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 listen... She's good. She's got yeah, a lot of potential, but you got to stop. But you got to stop r r rushing her, and she knows it as much as ever. First of all, too, I do have to talk about the scores of this fight. Uh oh, really? You're all over the thirty twenty seven. Yeah, which I agree with. Right. Thirty twenty six. Like somebody actually did give that fight a ten eight. There round. was no ten eight round. And then twenty nine twenty eight. Yeah. Like somebody gave one round. Renault, like yeah. ho Holly lost a round. No, she didn't yeah. lose a round. But so. You never know. You never like, know. Well, she is going to keep getting better. Until they hire me, Karen, you can expect this BS in the score. <laughs> she's definitely going to get better being part of Winkle John, uh, Jackson Winkle John. So, good. so I, I'm excited that she's here. Um, she's got to move sideways. She's got to move back yeah. sideways. She's got to, you know, yeah. she's a little yeah. too straightforward. Right, right. Well, we are now in, uh, in round five here. And um, Pete, you know, it's not necessarily a praise or pummel round that I wanted to do here, but I did want to talk about... Uh, you know, it's summertime, summer movie thing. So I, uh, it's not fights. So anybody who wants more fight stuff, maybe we'll trickle this some is in. You hit the... <laughs> no, actually, we'll talk about some fight stuff uh, after this. But um, I went to see Ant Man last night. It's great. It's really, it's great. It's really fun. Listen, I, I love. Now, Paul what's Rudd. Ant Man's superpower? Shrink, shrinkage is actually a superpower. <laughs> Um, <laughs> well, then I've been Ant Man for a long time. Ant Man, right? No, he I've been um, swimming the Atlantic Ocean, and I was right, there. right. He can, sh he can not only can he shrink, but then he can command other in other ants and things like that. So, like all these different kinds of ants are good at different things. Um, but he's got extra. He's got like incredible. The, the, his strength is amplified. Um, you know, ants are incredibly strong for right. percentage wise to their size. So his strengths are amplified, and you know he can go on you know secret missions because he can go get really small. Like they have him training at one point, trying to jump through a keyhole, and he runs at the keyhole full size, and then you know trains himself to get small enough to get through the keyhole, and then come back to real size. Um, it's a good storyline. Uh, when when you when you see it's fun. There's some the, the supporting actors are good. The script is good. Paul Rudd is great because he's not like some expected superhero. Do you know what I mean? Oh, uh, is he Ant-Man? He's Ant-Man. Ant Ant-Man? Okay. I really enjoyed it. I was very, uh, I don't want to say pleasantly surprised because I really don't think I had much expectation, but I enjoyed that more than, let's say, The Last Superman or something where it was just like way over the top explosion, right. you know, 10 explosions per minute. And this wasn't like that. This was, it did have action sequences and great visuals, but uh, I don't know. It was just, I don't know. That, I, I like the script more probably. Now you're kind of, you know, you and Wade are a little bit sort of closet comic book geeks, would you say? I don't say? know if it's a closet comic book geek. I like action movies and stuff, but I don't have a ton of comic books. Wade's more into it than I am. Um, but like the Star Trek. Well, I love like... Star Trek and Star Wars, but those are awesome, so. Still pretty bad, how are you? <laughs> no, actually, I found out. I've never been to Comic-Con, though, put it that way. My wife's a huge, like, Star Trek fan. Because and I don't find this out until after we're married. Like, you don't spring that on someone after. Like, that, like, like that's like me going, oh, well, then I guess I can tell you I like dwarf fucking, you know? So, you know, it's like, so it's not like, like no, if you're a Trekkie, I need to know that before we get married. You don't just you go, by the way, I... I'm kind of a geek. Did you think that, yeah, you think you see that as geeky, you don't see that as hot? Because guys usually love when a hot chick, like your wife, is down with geek stuff. No, geeks like when a hot geeks. chick is down with geek stuff. Geeks like. Well, yeah. Star Trek is great, so I don't understand what the problem is with that. Just, my favorite was Next Gen. I like the original. I like Next Gen a lot, though, but, you know. I Yeah, I didn't like the dude with the weird sunglasses. You either. didn't like Jordy? Yeah. Well, I Racist. I I remember 10, I know his name. 
but uh, but anyway, yeah. So and you you were mentioning it's the 20th anniversary, or no, 40th of 40th. Jaws. 40th. 40th. 40th anniversary of Jaws, which was basically the first summer blockbuster. Right. Um, and of course, we're on Martha's Vineyard where they filmed a lot of Jaws, so right. it's all over. And I'm trying to convince my kids to go into the ocean. No. It's just like 40th anniversary. Oh. And my kids like, oh, what's going on, man? Right. And I'm like, ah, there's no sharks. And then my dad, who's not quite catching on, goes, right. Oh, sure there was. There was an attack up in Montauk just last week. I'm like, what are you doing there, dude? <laughs> and then I'm like, yeah, but not where we go, because there's something in the water. I think the water's right. a little salty. And well, and did you see Mick Fanning? Have you seen that clip of the, the surfer Mick Fanning? Yes, yes. Dude, that's yeah. horrifying. Listen, I really try not, because I love swimming in the ocean, yeah, and I try too. not to watch that, because it's like... No, I know. Listen, if a shark's going to attack me, what am I going to do? Yeah, no, it's crazy. It's, and that's the end of round five there. I'm actually going to uh, like Florida shit. to see my mom uh, in August, and she's seen some sharks off the coast there. She's you know she's on the the uh, east coast of Florida, and there's been some sharks there. No no attacks, but you know she's seen them on the water. And same thing. That's my whole thing. I was like, but I'm still gonna go in. I think I'm just maybe won't go out as far and go body surfing. But I always right. joke with people. I'm like. They don't even like dark meat, though. So that's the thing. They're strictly a white meat animal, I'm pretty sure. Because you really yeah. don't... I mean, I'm just being slightly goofy, but slightly serious. Of all the shark attacks that ever get reported, have you ever seen it? Not some... Have okay. you It's always so, white well, meat. That's not because the sharks are... I'm gonna, okay, I'm about to say a statement that people are going to... I think more oh, white black people, people don't enjoy swim the ocean. <laughs> Come on. So don't say sharks are swimming around going, hey. Uh, All right. That's funny. No. Would that's you funny. say it, that's true? There, do I think black people don't swim? No, that's not true. In, no. <laughs> For some, don't, okay. In the ocean. Black in people the don't ocean. swim in the ocean. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I, I, don't, I don't think that's true necessarily. I don't know. I've, I mean, I've seen it. Um, well, I've seen it too. I've also seen a blurry photo of Sasquatch in the woods. What? <laughs> Listen, I don't um, mean this. It's just an observation. It, I it's an observation. It. And I will give you this, that um, if you've ever seen the movie, uh, which going out on a limb, guessing you haven't, uh, it's a, a documentary called um, Good Hair. And it's about black women and their hair and the whole thing about uh, hair and self-image and stuff for black women. But a lot of the women have weaves. Yeah, I missed and you, that. I know you've loved it. I know we've lost some viewers, but a lot of the women have weaves. It's on my they, cue list. They yeah. talk about how they won't go swimming, or they know they really like a guy, and, and that they don't uh, like get their hair wet. You know, for, they like yeah, they won't jump in a pool. They don't. So they're like, if I go swimming with you or whatever, it means I really like you. Now I have real hair, so I go swimming all the time. I love water, but you might have. I think it's funnier to say sharks like white meat. I don't want you bringing up statistics that black people don't swim, which may actually be valid, but, you know, what do you do? I'm just, uh, I'm hoping we're going to edit out the last 90 seconds. No, we're not. And you're going to get all kinds of things saying you're racist. <laughs> and by um, the way, I'm not saying, like, if you're down in Barbados or something. Yeah. I'm just saying in the colder northeastern regions, I have found that... Well, I Wade, help me out here. I'm just, like, like digging just myself deeper. Cold. You know what's going to bring this podcast thousands of viewers? Uh-oh. A puppy. <laughs> puppies. People love puppies. So now, Did you know, you just just, buy a puppy? this cameo right here, I think, will bring us thousands of viewers. Speaking of Star Wars and Ewoks. Do you realize how difficult you just made my life by giving your daughter a puppy? Yeah, <laughs> oh. I'm sure. Yeah. Sorry, buddy. Oh. So, wait, let me ask you this. So, as long as we're throwing out, you know things that are just going to get us in trouble. So I rent a Subaru, and I find out after I rent a Subaru that a Subaru is a lesbian car. <laughs> Have you ever heard that? I, I, I did not know this. Duh! <laughs> But you, but you know, that, that's now, Karen, just, you played softball in college, so I have, I kind of have no, to give you. I played softball the, uh, through high school, and I batted cleanup, and I might have been my team captain, but you, sir, uh, are wrong. I didn't play in college because the girl who played my position was too good, and I wouldn't have gotten to play. But I did know that was a lesbian car. Everybody knows it's a lesbian car. That may explain why my friend Travis didn't have dates in high school. <laughs> but his sister is a lesbian. He drove a Subaru. It's a, it's, yeah. th there's a connection. I, All right, so we were trying to figure out why it was a lesbian car, and I'm theorizing that 
because it has four wheel drive, but it looks like a car. <laughs> so Brenda and Cameron can drive up to Vermont together yeah. for skiing and the bed and breakfast. Oh, I mean, why is it a lesbian car? I think it's for this, this yes, the sturdiness for when they go camping and when you can <laughs> fit, you can fit lots of soccer balls in the back for when you go to coach the team. And um, it, yes, it's smaller. Any than, other stereotypes you want to It's smaller than a truck. It's a little, I don't. They can fit their golf clubs in the back. I my, Yeah, mine are sometimes hard to put in the trunk of my car. See, this is what I'm saying, Pete, on paper. I'm a total lesbian, okay? A lot of the stuff I like really reads lesbian. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I've just always known that. I've Like, since college, I've known that there's a lesbian. Anytime college. you say you batted cleanup on your softball team, I Do you just, even know what that means, Pete? I know the euphemism for one. <laughs> <laughs> it means you're the best hitter on the team. It means batter I one, two. I understand what it means in softball terms, Ken. Batter one, two, and three are supposed to get on base, and I'm supposed to clean them up and bring them all home. Clean them up. I got it. Clean them up. <laughs> clean up. I had no dates nice. in high school, though, so I may as well have started dating women. I mean, at least it would have increased my odds because I had zero dates in high school. And finally, Please. this podcast is going where I know. I'm like, we need to um, go. I go back to you guys. <laughs> um, Good seeing you. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, as I mentioned at the top, uh, we went down to King's MMA. Okay. So we've got um, uh, UFC 190 is coming up. Obviously, we have UFC on Fox next. Uh, but UFC 190 is coming up on August 1st. So Ronda Rousey had a media day the other day. Um, and we have uh, the full 37-minute media scrum from there. We've also isolated some clips where she's talking about why she likes Conor McGregor and uh, some things about... Um, we. We have a few few different things there. But anyway, the 37 minutes, she basically answers any question you could possibly have. Um, we talk about the depth of the division. We talk about when she might retire. We talk about Cyborg, all of this. Um, so that's on our YouTube channel. Um, and maybe, Can we talk uh, about her quote at the ESPYs? I yes, loved it. of course, they talk about Mayweather, yeah. The Floyd yeah, Mayweather? Sure. Oh, Oh, so you do talk about that? Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff on there. So there's 37 Minutes with Rhonda on uh, MMA Heat's channel on YouTube. And then we have some isolated things on my channel. But um, like I said, then on Friday, we went down to King's MMA, home of Rafael Cordero, home of Verdum, and uh, Rafael Dos Anjos, two champions right now. So we went down there because uh, Shogun's been here training with them. And... Uh, he's got basically just a few more days there before he goes back. So he's looking solid. You know, we talked to Shogun and we talked to Hoffa about kind of getting, you know, people talk about, oh, bringing back the old Shogun, you know, getting that mentality back. Uh, some things that have gone wrong, you know, maybe in the last couple fights. Um, and uh, so I have to say, I mean, I'm an admitted fan, but I thought he looked good. He looks more lean than people will have seen him. Um, you know, they work really hard down there and he's, yeah, he's training with Fabrizio and all that. So that interview is on the way and one with Hoffa and uh, also Benil Dariush was there. He's fighting August 8th. So we have that coming up as well. And, um, Jacob Harmon, their wrestling coach down there, which people don't usually hear from him too much. Um, so we talked to him, uh, as well. So that's all coming up and we don't have a UFC tonight this week, but I'm going to, uh, Chicago, uh, for, uh, UFC and Fox. I'll be working uh, on the Fox stuff. So it'll be fun. Cool. You, cool. sir. We'll be drinking martinis on by the bay. No, Maine. No, Maine. We're beers. We're Is it beers? beers? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, now, quick praiser, Pommel. Did you see Caitlyn Jenner's speech at the ESPY? I did see Caitlyn Jenner's speech. I thought it was great. I did too. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I thought I, I thought it was great. Um, what a way yeah. to what a way to use that platform. Oh, for gonna... sure, for sure. Yeah. You know, I mean, and it's tricky because I know it's a, a divisive. Uh, topic for some people and I feel like certain uh, a lot of older generation people are like all right just stop talking about it like enough already like like can we change right. the conversation because they are uh, unaware of how many youth are uh, in a real troubled position and getting beat up and uh, right. who knows what for that so yeah good for her yeah, yeah. I, I still have a hard time saying to her but I mean yeah. I know I'm supposed to yeah and I want to right 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 and I mean to, but you it's just to. a good time. It's, it's tricky. Fun. So when, you, when you'll, you're you coming back at the end of the week, so next week's podcast will be live and in person? I'm coming back Saturday. Okay. So can, oh, can you guys record the fight Saturday for me? Son of a bitch, Peter. What do we got to make you little cucumber sandwiches? Cucumber sandwiches. We showed you the damn dog. Yes, Pete. We can record the fights for you. <laughs> 
it's really a little favorite here. It's a Perhaps little. Perhaps I should yeah. pass you off camera. I was gonna say it's too bad you're not back because you could come over and watch it with Wade because I won't be back till Sunday. But uh... well, that way we can watch it Sunday morning. Okay. Punches and brunches. Punches and brunches. Um, legs and eggs. eggs no. Like the legs and eggs buffet. Uh, okay, so Pete, where can people find you? Have you been tweeting on vacation? I don't think you have. Karen, I have put out so many tweets. Um, Maybe you should just do Instagram instead, because you just take a picture. You don't have to actually say words. Here you go. Here are the, here are the clams I had tonight. <laughs> no, no, I have not tweeted. My, uh, I did. No, I did put out a couple tweets uh, during the fights. Okay, who am I okay. I haven't tweeted that much, Karen. I have not right. tweeted that but much. But if they want... But I am on vacation. Karen, Jeez. these thumbs are taking a vacation, Jeez. okay? These, a uh... A well-deserved vacation, for sure. Um, and, um, but if they want to follow you on Twitter, they can find you at... Mind Noogie. Mind Noogie. All right. So for Thank me you. on Twitter, Karen Bryant, K-A-R-Y-N, B-R-Y-A-N-T. Uh, we have um, a Karen Bryant YouTube channel and an MMA Heat YouTube channel. On Instagram, I'm KB Heat. Um, and uh, you can find us on Facebook, like our MMA Heat page. Um, so lots of good stuff on the way. Try and enjoy Wait, the I summer. Did, I did tweets during Saturday's fights. I did do a couple live tweets. Did you? Okay. I was barely and hanging I put, on. Um, at, at Karen Bryant. Oh, okay, y'all did You know, no, this weekend was tricky because... No, no forwards, no, no. Our call for time, my call time, I had a 3 a.m. call time Friday and a 4 a.m. call time Saturday. So, w w you know, like... <laughs> Uh-oh, I'm now being invaded by kids and family. Uh-oh, all right, to, we'll stop now. I have um, to go. Um, okay, cool. So, Pete, thank you. This was fun. And uh, can, can you hear him? I, I, I gotta go. Okay. Hide the beer, Karen. Hide the beer. Hide the beer. Hide the beer. Take the beer. Hide the beer. <laughs> uh, enjoy the rest of your vacation, and we'll see you. Oh, I should tell people, if they want the um, audio version of this, go to mmaheat.com forward slash podcast. You can find links to Stitcher and iTunes there and to all our other shows. So, Okay? Cool. All right. All right. Thanks. See you. See ya.